for value, and we are a value house, we, we like things which are cheap. Um, and for price momentum, we like things which are actually starting to go up. You can't beat Japan in the world at the moment. On a number of metrics, Japan's the cheapest it's been compared to the rest of the world in over a decade. Uh, and you've got a number of things changing in Japan at the moment, so we're particularly enamoured with Japan. Uh, there's a bit of a joke in Japan, or people who look at Japan, that uh, Japan's never missed an opportunity to stuff up their recovery. Uh, so they raised consumption taxes in 96, 97, just as they were getting a recovery going. Um, they've managed to stop QE just as they were getting going in 03, 04. So uh, they've, never, they've never succeeded more in snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. This time around, I, I think things are quite different. You're seeing a number of microeconomic reforms. Um, and over the weekend, uh, Abe won his uh, snap election again as well. Uh, and all this microeconomic reform is actually coming from, and I think Japanese people are ready for change. Uh, so I think this time around, it might be the one that breaks out, but I'm very wary and cognizant of history. So traditionally, if, if I'd told you that uh, PMIs, which are an indicator again of global growth, were running where they were, you'd say the exporters. Uh, but one of the most interesting things about Japan this year has been the decoupling between yen and Japanese market. So traditionally what happened is yen would fall in value, which would, would make their exports a lot cheaper. Uh, so those stocks would go up. But if you looked at them in US dollar terms, so you take the FX out of it, Japanese stocks were going nowhere. This year you're seeing the yen stay flat and all these stocks go up, which is again another promising sign that Japan might be able to decouple from a, a cheaper yen. But domestic consumption stories and domestic uh, infrastructure stories are doing quite well this year as well. Uh, without saying too glib, they're all going up. Uh, sometimes in macro related stories you just need to say this is what's going to happen just buy the lot of them. Uh, the only things you probably don't want to buy are heavily overpriced defensive stocks which people were hiding in for a number of years. Uh, but apart from that it really doesn't matter what you buy. Look we, we own uh, a number of stocks in Japan, we've got about 20% of our fund invested in Japan. And so what I might give the audience is a little uh, story of one of the more interesting companies we're looking at now called A-Team. Uh, for your younger viewers in the audience might actually remember B.A. Baracus. <laughs> and yes, the stock is named after the A-Team. The founder, uh, when he was founding his business in the 1990s, was a university dropout, very entrepreneurial guy, uh, and got into software coding before it was cool. Uh, and when he decided to name his company, he wanted to name it after his favourite TV show. Uh, so the A-Team is listed in, uh, uh, in Japan. It trades uh, the head offices in Nagoya, so uh, in between uh, Osaka and Tokyo. And what they do is they focus uh, in online businesses. Uh, so they're, they've got a lot of coders. So they, for example, uh, if you're looking to hire a wedding facility uh, in Japan, you can put in your bid uh, and a number of wedding halls and banquet halls will come back to you with your bid. So they're an online marketplace for wedding halls amongst other things. Uh, so and they also do car, secondhand cars. So if you're looking to buy a secondhand car, you can put your bid in and the dealerships will come back with their best bid back to you. So an online marketplace for these things. Got about 700 employees. Uh, uh, owner founded, which is quite rare in Japan. Japan's still very quite traditional. Uh, he's got a number of women in his senior management team. Again, an, uh, quite an entrepreneurial guy. He's only about 46, 47. And for us, I think this represents some of the better bits of Japan in that you can still get quite entrepreneurial people and you can find very interesting stocks if you go and try and find them.